So, good old progressive lenses. It's been a while since we talked about these guys, so I thought it was time we revisited and got more into those task-specific ones I mentioned before. Now, if you didn't see that original video, I'll link it up here. If you're new to the channel, like, subscribe, follow along, so you can catch up on all kinds of cool stuff like this. We also talk about a tool, a uh, cool, a ton of cool. I'm creating words today. This is going to be fun, can't you tell? But we also have a ton of cool different sunglasses and frame reviews we do as well, so be sure to check those out. But let's take a second and dive in here to what we actually want to see, which is these different types of progressive lenses. Now, I'm going to keep it a little bit simple because there are literally thousands and thousands of different progressive designs. We're going to get into kind of the core three variations that show you a little bit of how we can tweak and set things up a little bit differently for you. So, let's dive right into it and start with kind of the basic progressive lens. So, this is what you see pretty well anywhere, where the whole top part of this lens is going to be that far off at a distance vision. And then, as you look down through the lens, it just gradually increases in power. So, you've got this little zone here, which is going to be like your mobile phone, your computer, or that sort of thing. And it's going to gradually keep increasing until you get to this nice little swelled part down at the bottom that's going to be the full mirror field of view. So that's going to be where you do your fine print reading, like maps, pill bottles, books, that sort of thing. Now, obviously, if you're sitting in a computer screen all day long, that little tiny sweet spot, as they call it, is going to be an absolute pain in your rear, and you're going to hate dealing with that. Oftentimes, it causes a lot of neck cramping and just general strain from having to stay in focus in that tiny little spot all day long. The small improvement from that is going to be a customized progressive. Now, this is most of what I fit. These are going to be adapted for exactly how the lenses are sitting in the frame in front of your eyes. We supply a whole mess of measurements to the lab, tweak the design a little bit, and we can even refine this from Zeiss doesn't show it, but we can refine the area of field of view you have and kind of trade off a little bit of distance for a little more near or a little more intermediate and squeeze the inner or distance and near. Just a lot of different things we can do with these type of designs that are the basic kind of standard freeform progressive lenses. Now, the big advantage of that freeform surfacing is what I mentioned. We can tweak the corridor, we can adjust the prescription, and actually the way they do this anymore, it is specified point by point across this lens surface so we can maximize the field of sharp, clear vision across the surface of the lens and get you really what you need and as wide of a field as we can get it in based on your prescription and the frame measurements without really compromising anything else. The biggest advantage of these, at least in my opinion, is that you can have multiple pairs and you don't really get that eye strain, tiredness, fatigue, like that headache from switching between pairs of glasses. I know you've all done this. You have two or three pairs laying around. You switch back to the older pair or whatever and you fight a headache all day long. Well, this, if you do the same prescription in a bunch of different frames, you're not going to have that problem so much with this method. And in fact, my wife and I probably swap between about seven or more pairs. Probably not something I should be admitting, but we do. And we don't have that problem. Now this is, as I've mentioned before, these are the task-specific progressives. And what this is, it's kind of an older design that's been reworked a little bit. We can actually do this with these other designs I mentioned up here, but you are going to, as I mentioned, significantly trade off this distance field in order to do that. Now, the way you can do that, at least the way I do that in some cases, will decrease that power to start with, or increase the power. It'll be more plus at the distance part, which is going to fog the far distance, but that gives you that nice big open field without as much of this blur off to the side. Now, if you're sitting at a desk, which is what these are designed for, it still works extremely well. Now, this says a vision approximately to seven feet for the top part of the lens. That is much more variable than what that says. We can set these up anywhere from 14 to, I think the smallest is gonna be about a four or five foot range, depending on what your ad power is, to where you can still function with that at your desk and see a little bit far off. But the way this tweaks out is that very top part, you're basically gonna to have to drop your head down because this little cross symbol here, and it's the same case in all of these, 
is right in front of the pupil. So as you drop your head down, you do recover some of that distance vision just a little bit, but it's never gonna be crisp and clear. Obviously this isn't something you wanna try and drive your car in, but <laughs> in a pinch it can work. You probably just shouldn't be trying to read street signs and you know, you might run into a car or two, whatever. As long as you don't mind that, that's okay. I mind that, I like cars, don't hurt the cars. Anyways, so the important part here is right in front of the pupil is going to be set for the distance you're using it. In this case, this is set up for the office and a computer, so that's going to be set right at, on average, between 26 and 32 inches away. And you can see that is going to give you a much, much larger field. It's kind of all this orangey chartreuse section right here versus up here. As I mentioned, you've got just that little tiny fleck of area that's going to be in focus as my phone is not even in focus so you've got you go from this little bit right here to this nice fat zone right here and that's going to make it a lot easier this especially if you're using like a two three monitor or more setup you know this pays for itself in no time just in reduced eye strain and increased efficiency and functionality and of course, just like the other lens, it does continue to increase in power, so you get that near zone at the bottom. Really good for sitting down in a book with these. Now, these aren't going to be like an executive bifocal or a big old 45 or a 35 millimeter trifocal, but it can work pretty similarly. The main thing is it makes it much easier to use a computer without that line segment. Now, a lot of times, actually, in a cost-saving pair, we can do this in a line bifocal. And if you're not familiar with a line bifocal, it is this guy down here. Of course, you have that segmented line right here, so you get a little bit of image jump. This is drawn out as the standard 28 millimeter line bifocal. Now, what I mentioned before, these can go out 35, 45, and even the executive, which is all the way across. But we have on occasion done that as kind of a budget way to get that computer pair. So in this case, instead of where this says distance and near, this would all be set up for that 30 so inches I specified before, and then you would have that near segment down at the bottom. Now, I don't wanna blow anyone's brains up, so I think that's a pretty good stopping point for the different types of functional progressive lenses. So if you have any more questions, definitely drop those down in the comments below. Let me know your thoughts about this video, or if you've worn some of these task-specific progressives before, let everybody know in the comments below what you thought about them, because that's what matters. It's what you actually think about the lenses you're wearing and how they improve, hopefully, your functionality in the real world. If this video helped you, definitely like and give me some feedback as well. Otherwise, I will catch you guys next time around.